Provinces are opening, but case numbers are climbing in some parts of the country. And the only thing that can stop COVID is a vaccine. There's been a lot of hype this week. Two big vaccine makers claiming they could have one ready by the fall. The results of one small study on humans are now in, and they appear to be encouraging. I mean, this is, uh, this is encouraging news, Jake. The plan is to have maybe a billion doses. I think we're going to have a vaccine by the end of the year. Now, the doctors would say, well, you shouldn't say that. I'll say what I think. Sounds amazing, considering it usually takes years for a vaccine to be developed. So is it all too good to be true? There are mounting concerns that Moderna didn't share all of its human trial data with the public, and it was only tested on 45 people. And that other firm, AstraZeneca, it hasn't even published results of its human trials yet. Even if a vaccine is ready by the end of the year, will it only go to the highest bidder? And could Canada be frozen out? Here's the thing. World leaders are scrambling to make sure their people get covered first. And so far, it looks like the U.S. is winning that race. The federal government will invest in manufacturing all of the top vaccine candidates before they're approved. So we're knowing exactly what we're doing before they're approved. That means they better come up with a good vaccine because we're ready to deliver it. The U.S. has thrown billions of dollars at American companies working on a vaccine and an extra billion and a half to get dibs on potential vaccines from Sanofi in France and AstraZeneca in the UK. And again, this is all before they're approved. So where does this international tug of war leave Canada? The federal government has invested $192 million to help create a made-in-Canada vaccine. But those vaccines haven't even started human trials yet. We're months behind countries like China, the U.S. and the U.K. We asked the federal government for details on its plan, and it told us through close monitoring of the vaccine development pipeline, both domestically and internationally, the government of Canada will work quickly to negotiate purchase agreements with vaccine manufacturers to secure supply for all Canadians as soon as it is feasible. Yeah, that's the plan. The government also told us by this summer, the National Research Council aims to be ready to produce up to 100,000 vaccine doses per month. But Canada has almost 38 million people. Kind of flashback here to the swine flu in 1976 when Canada had to purchase the flu vaccine from the United States. But then the U.S. decided to vaccinate its entire population first. And we never got our vaccines. Joining me now are two people working on two of the most promising made-in-Canada vaccines, both with funding from the federal government. Dr. Brian Ward is the Chief Medical Officer at Medicago. He's in Montreal. And Dr. Volker Gertz is the CEO and Director of Vito Intervac with the University of Saskatchewan. He's in Saskatoon. So hello, both of you. Um, a lot of Canadians have been hearing what sounds kind of amazing news out of the United States. Is this blind optimism, Brian, for, for Canadians to think they could get a vaccine by September? Well, I, I think it's good to be optimistic, but there are clearly more and less credible sources of information. Um, uh, and I think that the scientific evidence, the medical evidence, uh, certainly what Dr. Fauci is saying, is that it's extremely unlikely that there will be a vaccine for widespread use by September. And Volker, I, I know that uh, not that long ago, you approached Canadian government saying that if there were to be uh, an emergency like this, that you would need to ramp up capacity. But what did you tell them? I mean, is that part of the problem that we don't have the manufacturing in place to produce a vaccine really quickly? So Canada has a number of vaccine manufacturers that uh, have capacity themselves. Um, Medicago is one of them. But for a public research like ours, um, the current capacity is quite limited. And so the federal government has recognized this and has funded, for example, construction of a manufacturing facility here at Vito Intervac, but also at the National Research Council in, in Montreal, and then at uh, several other places in Canada, too. So your capacity, I think, uh, Brian, is you've got two plants. So once you go through the human trials, you've got something that you think works, you can produce the vaccine. But one of the, the one with the bigger capacity is in the States. And we saw Donald Trump basically at one point during this crisis say, we're not going to ship the, the masks. We're going to keep the masks for us. I mean, is there 
a concern? Are you at all concerned that, that you won't be able to get the vaccines from the U.S.-based lab that, you know, Trump could say, sorry, keeping it for ourselves? Well, I, I guess that is a possibility. We hope that wouldn't come to pass. Um, the, there is production capability in Quebec City, um, but you're right, we have a five times larger facility in the United States. Um, I, I think that in the event that our vaccine looks uh, really good and we start producing at large scale at both sites, I think that there would have to be a process of negotiation to see how much of the vaccine that we produced in the United States would be able to be shipped up to Canada. Uh, but there will be political uh, involvement and interference in the movement of vaccines um, as they become available for COVID. And, and Volker, do you have fears that, you know, if everything it looks like the Americans are trying to gobble up as much of the potential vaccine as they can, do you have fears that Canada will be outgunned here? I don't think we want to start a panic and and and, and getting people um, starting to worry about whether they will have access to vaccines or not. I think what is important is what Brian and I said that you know it's important that in Canada we have technologies going forward and as part of these Canadian vaccines our mandate is to ensure that Canadians will have access to these vaccines. So Brian, how messy could this get politically? Well, all of us hope that it doesn't get messy politically. Um, but there are clearly some countries in the world, Canada included, that have multiple vaccine technologies moving forward, um, while other countries in the world have no vaccine manufacturing capacity whatsoever. Um, and, I, and I think it, it is on all of us to try to make sure that there is some degree of equity in the distribution of the vaccines as they become available. And again, we're not talking about one vaccine, we're talking about probably several of these vaccine technologies moving forward to very large scale. So you're talking about equality in terms of countries or in, or in terms of people? Like, is, is, it, is it the rich and well-connected? Well, really both. Um, right now, it's very clear that in the United States, um, as after the frontline workers, some of the people who are, appear to be at highest risk um, are the people who can't work from home. So the bus drivers, the taxi drivers, Uber drivers, the people who are in the fast food service. Um, and, and we need to make sure that those individuals who are at very high risk are among the first to be offered the vaccine. Are there plans for that? And how difficult is that to make happen, Volker, do you think? Well, again, I think the governments um, around the world, uh, in collaboration with the World Health Organization, will have to look at these things. and. And uh, Canada, for example, has already agreed to make some of the vaccines available to other countries as part of the, the global work that's ongoing, the global coordination. Um, so work is underway. Well, last word to you, uh, Brian. I mean, do you think that, like, what would you tell Canadians who are kind of hoping that maybe in a few months this pandemic will be stopped by, by a vaccine? Uh, well, Wendy, one of the things that people keep saying is they use they use the word vaccine singular. Um, and even the largest companies in the world, uh, Sanofi, J&J, &J, are talking about producing a billion doses of vaccine. But most people are planning on using two doses of, the va of whatever vaccine it is, which means that even the largest manufacturers could only produce half a billion, protect half a billion people. So even though we use words like race, if we don't have many vaccines that arrive safely on the market, um, it'll be years before we get everybody vaccinated. Last word to you, Volker. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with Brian. It's very important that we see multiple technologies coming forward, many vaccines, both in Canada as well internationally. And when will that be? <laughs> I want to I want a date. <laughs> We are all hoping as soon as possible. I think it's, like we said, it's fair to assume we will see early in the new year um, several of these technologies uh, ramping up. It's been great to hear from both of you. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll be watching. Thank you. Thanks very much.